Aloha everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. So the backdrop is different again because I moved again. <laughs> There's been a lot of changes happening, all of which are good, but it is really stressful. I'm trying to do it on top of my normal workload, so sorry if I look sleepy, I slept on the carpet for an hour. Do I look a little crusty? If I don't, then bitch, you're blind. <laughs> anyway, in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to one of my subscribers' skincare routines. Now, I did this once before because, it, I don't even, when was that? That was a while ago. You know, quarantine has messed up my sense of time, like, completely. A subscriber skincare routine YouTube video came up on my feed. She made a video for me to react to, and I was like, oh my god, I have to do this. And it was so much fun. The subscriber and I still keep in touch. She's amazing. But I thought I would do it again. Because it's been a while, and I recently searched my name into YouTube to see if there would be any more. And, Holy frijoles. You guys are freaking incredible. There are so many videos to react to. I was like, I don't I don't know which one to react to. So I had to make the difficult decision of deciding one, but I finally decided it. And I'm super stoked to react because based off of the first 30 seconds of this video, this girl seems really, really cool. Before we get into it, I want to say thank you to today's video sponsor, Audible. Woo -woo! If you don't know Audible, they are the world's largest audiobook platform. They have so many different titles that you can listen to on your way to work, doing laundry, fleeing the country and assuming a new identity. <laughs> no, just kidding. Don't do it while you're doing laundry. No, but seriously, Audible is so amazing and I love listening to audiobooks when I'm driving in the car from location to location. Sitting in traffic or doing chores are the perfect time to listen to audiobooks. I love Audible. You guys know this. I just think audiobooks are so cool because for someone who has difficulty reading a single page because I will instantly lose focus or fall asleep, it's a perfect solution. But I don't know why now. I think it's a combination of just not being able to focus plus being underslept. I can't read books because I will instantly fall asleep or instantly get distracted. So audiobooks are the perfect way to be able to read the books I love. One audiobook I've recently been listening to is Deep Work, which is a really cool book focused on maximizing your efficiency because it's so much more than just a time management book. It's all about maximizing your mental efficiency to be able to just fully deep dive into your work and accomplish as much as you can just within a few hours. It's really incredible and definitely needed for me and I'm slowly making my way through it. And if you're someone who's also trying to focus on time management, there's a ton of other titles that Audible carries that you can listen to in case Deep Work doesn't work for you. Deep Work doesn't work. <laughs> That was weak, Hiram. When you're a member, you get one credit a month that you can redeem for one audiobook. But the other awesome thing about an Audible membership is that you get access to the Plus catalog, which has thousands of audiobooks, podcasts, Audible originals, all available for you at no extra cost with an Audible membership. And the best thing is that new members can get a 30-day free trial to Audible if you use the link in the description box below or text Hiram to 500-500. Thank you so much, Audible, for sponsoring this video and always being an awesome partner in the past. And thank you guys, yes, all you who are watching, for always being supportive of me and my sponsorships. So let's get into it. So this video is called The Skincare Routine Changed My Life. Thank you, Hiram, which I'm not sure which product she is going to be using, which is why I'm really excited to see if she does use products I recommend or other ones. I have no idea, but her name is Ainer B. A-I-G-N-E-R-B on YouTube. I don't know if that's her actual name, but I'm just going to call her Ainer. On her Instagram, it says yay, yay. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. I'm just going to call you Ainer. Just from the first 30 seconds, she is adorable. So I will have her socials in the description box below. She hasn't posted in like four weeks and she creates awesome content. Content. So you guys should go spam her comment section and subscribe to her channel so that she can start posting more. Let's watch. I'm about to drop some knowledge on you that you ain't even know that you need. <laughs> yes, so, I'm ready. Boo Kitty, get ready. Her hair is so cute. Hey Boo Kitty, welcome <laughs> back to the hey. channel. How y'all doing during this quarantine? And don't I hope you're not splurging like me on skincare. But it's not that expensive. Guilty. I'm about to give some gems, so continue watching. Okay. All right, so today's video is dedicated to my skincare routine. I have dry skin. Um, okay. It's like normal to dry. Like in my T-zone is where it's most dry, mm. and it gets like dry under here, but everything else is normal, like in my U shape area. Mm -hmm. um, I also have eczema, which really oh, sucks. Oh, I'm I sorry. I hate eczema, eczema. I especially have... Um, eczema flare-ups during the winter time mm -hmm. is not cute. I don't wish eczema upon anybody that yeah, should it's... be ghetto. Anyways, um... <laughs> She's right. I mean, I wouldn't wish eczema on anyone, which by the way, y'all need to start coming for my pronunciations of eczema. I used to say eczema before and people were freaking out in my comment section and saying it's eczema. So I started saying eczema and now everyone's in my comment section like, what the heck is eczema? And I'm like, bro, make up your damn mind. And I personally like the pronunciation eczema because I think of the iconic vine. The eczema. <laughs> so good. So funny. But that's interesting that she does struggle with dryness in the T-zone because most people typically struggle with more oiliness in the T-zone. But it goes to show you, again that everyone's skin is totally different but i feel you on that eczema struggle in the winter because in the winter my hands would crack and bleed definitely got the men <laughs> um my skincare journey i actually 
shamefully just started doing um just paying more attention to my skincare i wasn't Good. so in tune with it until now which is awful i should be ashamed of myself <laughs> no I'm that's great for well 23 years old turning 24 <laughs> in september you know <laughs> for a girl that's fine. but i've been watching oh oh my gosh no wonder I like her. I don't know what it is with you Virgos, but you guys are the coolest f***ing people on the planet. Every time I'm introduced to a Virgo, we just vibe instantly. And every single Virgo I know, I don't know they're a Virgo and I'm just like, you are the coolest person ever. And then when I figure out they're a Virgo, I'm like, why are all of my best friends Virgos? You are starting at a great time for skincare. Do not be ashamed of starting late when it comes to the skincare game because just even 50 years ago, the only people that would use a consistent skincare routine throughout their entire life were celebrities. Most people besides that either one didn't use skincare or two only used it when they were older. And coming as someone who used to deal with clients that the vast majority of people do start into a really good skincare routine when they're much older. So the earlier you can start, the better. So happy to see that you have started. But I've been watching this one person's YouTube videos. His name is Hiram. I'll link hey. his um, <laughs> name or his YouTube channel in the oh, cards box and in the description box below. And he's really taught me what I should and shouldn't be doing and how I should be treating my skin Yay. because girl, the stuff that they put in skincare, they really don't be caring about you at all, okay? <laughs> like, they be putting uh, plastic and shit in your skincare. Yes. That's not cute. Why would I want to put plastic on my face? If I want to put plastic on my face, I'll exactly. get my head in the ocean. That she's talking about polyethylene which is a lot of times used in cleansing balms and while polyethylene isn't the worst thing ever and yes there are bigger issues like global warming plastic bags like daily waste i'm just like why would i want to put that on my skin though like if i don't have to and it's not the best thing ever and there are products without it why not i also have to say small creators are the most fucking supportive people on the planet you guys are amazing and some of the nicest people i have ever met and specifically within the skincare space there's such just a loving and supportive community of small creators that are just awesome thank you for the love girl and thank you for linking my channel it was very nice so um the products that i'm using today i'm just gonna honestly um i'm gonna be breaking down the different okay. products that i have it's not gonna be too lengthy because ain't nobody got time to sit for a long video okay so <laughs> <laughs> first product i go in with the cleanser you always need a cleanser okay yes. and since i have dry skin i really wanted a soft cleanser oh, with um, and it's very very moisturizing like as soon as i wash it off it's, it feels, it makes my skin feel so, so good. good. So it's That's the good. La Roche Posay <gasps> yes. cleanser. Yes. And this I paid $15 for at Target. And when I tell you, my face feels amazing. It is um, the so first, It says good. that it's so free, sulfate free, fragrance free, which is really good because according to Hiram, if there's <laughs> fragrance in your products that are not washed off, like if it's in like serums or stuff like that that can be really irritating to the skin the long-term mm -hmm. effects and anybody want that and it also has <laughs> ceramide 3 and niacinamide now niacinamide yes. Is a um, brightening agent. Let me look yes. at my hand. Oh my god, I love this. Niacinamide is a um, a form I of vitamin this. D3, which is good for your skin, and it also helps with like um, hyperpigmentation and yes. acne and things like that, which is really really good. She pulled out her laptop with notes about skincare. I'm vibing with her already. I love the education. I love that she's showing her audience and her subscribers like information about these ingredients rather than just saying like, oh, it has niacinamide and I don't really know what it does, but people say it's good. Props to you for educating yourself and trying to educate your audience. That is amazing. That cleanser is bomb. One of my favorite drugstore cleansers of all time and one of the best cleansers for dry skin I've ever discovered because it has this unique ability of being able to deeply cleanse the skin while still hydrating and nourishing it. Typically you get one or the other, either a really strong deep cleanser for oily skin or you get a cleanser for dry skin that's very hydrating, but it doesn't clean shit, at least for my skin. And that one does such a good job and I'm always recommending that one to people because it just performs so well, the ingredients are good, the price point is great. Awesome product. So glycerin is the second product in here and yes. um, it's in blah, 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 blah. glycerin <laughs> is the second product in this ingredient list and it's a humectant, which is really helpful for oh retaining my moisture in the skin. And for us dry girls, we really, really need that. And then yes. the next thing, that I would go in with after washing my face would be my gly glycolic Ooh, acid from okay. The Ordinary, which okay. is a really um, inexpensive brand, especially if you're starting yes. off with skincare. Hiram put me on to all of these products, okay? Yay. Shout out to you, <laughs> Boo Kitty, okay? Oh. Look, like, it says She's so cute. I, oh my gosh. Love the education around glycerin. Glycerin is an amazing ingredient for any skin type, but particularly dry skin and a great alternative to hyaluronic acid. In my opinion, they're kind of as good as each other. But afterwards, she goes in with the glycolic acid toner. Now that toner is 
super good, super powerful, too strong for my skin, so I don't use it, but a really good product nonetheless. And I know because she's using it, a lot of people are going to comment down below saying, I thought people with darker skin tones can't use glycolic acid. There have been some messages circulating out there about glycolic acid potentially being a lot more risky to people with darker skin tones and increasing the risk of hyperpigmentation and that people with darker skin tones shouldn't use it. I can't even tell you how many dermatologists I've listened to talk about this because I really wanted to get a holistic view, but people with darker skin tones are more prone to hyperpigmentation. And when you're exfoliating the skin, your skin does become more sensitive to the sun, which risks hyperpigmentation, dark spots. It's not high risk unless you are overusing an exfoliant, which anyone who overuses an exfoliant is going to see a lot of problems because yes, it does make your skin more sensitive to the sun. Now, that being said, clinical studies have typically only been performed on white people. So specifically regarding people with darker skin tones, there's not a lot of specified data, but the overall message that I'm seeing from chemists and researchers is that glycolic acid is fine to use so long as you're not overusing it. And if you are someone with darker skin tone and you are nervous about that, you can use an alternative like mandelic acid. My favorite is the Biwish Trend Mandelic Acid Water. It's a 5% concentration. It's a low concentration, but really effective for exfoliating the skin. And an ingredient like mandelic acid is going to be significantly less sensitizing than glycolic acid and more optimal for people with darker skin tone. Well, I wouldn't say it's bad that she's using that so long as she's not overusing it. If you are someone who's concerned about that, mandelic acid is a great substitute. All of these things, don't be scared of if it has acid in it. If it's like a weak acid, you can do your research by yourself. Mm. But if it's weak acids like glycolic acid, niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, oh, nice. um, salicylic acid, it's very gentle on the skin. Now I know mm, salicylic acid, which I the education. have in my, um, products that you'll see later that is the strongest of the weakest acid yes. that we can put on our face and that actually goes deeper into our pores and penetrates and get all of that dirt and nastiness and gook out of our skin. I love seeing the clips of her going back and forth to look at her computer. It's so cute. She's absolutely right. Salicylic acid has the smallest molecule, so it's able to go deepest into the pore and exfoliate the skin deeper than any of the other exfoliating acids. And it really helps with acne and pit bulls. That being said, salicylic acid, I wouldn't say as much helps with hyperpigmentation, scarring, darkness. That's really where niacinamide or brightening agents are gonna help even more. But everything else, completely right on. I'm loving this education. Yes, yes, yes. Is it weird that I feel like a proud mom watching her talk about skincare information? Ugh. Also have this hey, nice yep, cinnamon classic. focus. Okay, it doesn't want to focus, whatever. But I have this um, niacinamide 10% plus zinc 1%. So zinc is actually also good for your skin as well. Yes. Oh, zinc is good for your skin because it's an essential mineral that is found inside and outside of our body. And it helps maintain health to like our largest organs. And it's also really good <laughs> for anti um, inflammatory effects. Like yes. for if you have like a flare up or anything, it's really good for that. But I found that I really didn't like this product, but only because okay. I realized when I started using it, my face burned a little bit Ooh, and yeah, I was that's like, not a okay, maybe it's supposed to be like that, but I know it's not according to Hiram. So I was yes, like, okay, you well, know, okay. My dumb ass, I didn't do a patch <laughs> test. I just slapped that hole on my face oh, and no. lo and behold, I got this. Oh, hell no. And it's been here for three weeks. I <gasps> literally, because I'm super dumb, don't follow this stuff, okay? <laughs> I use this every day for oh, no. like three to four days. And then lo and behold, I got this rash right mm -hmm. here. I am so sorry, that's so unfortunate. I hate it when any of my recommendations are the reasons that people have sensitive or allergic reactions. And I know it's unavoidable, like there's no way that I or you can predict that. But I'm still just like, oh no, I hate to be the reason why the skin breaks out or has any sensitivity. So some people, yes, have sensitivities to niacinamide or they have sensitivities to that specific formula. It just really depends. You can have a sensitivity to any ingredient, even if it's the best of the best. It's just the way life works. She touches on such an important point, patch testing. It is really important to patch test if you have sensitive skin or if you're starting into skincare for the first time because you really don't want to have to deal with a rash or a horrific reaction just because you instantly decide to slather it all over your face and you can do a patch test by doing a little bit on your arm or you can do a little bit on your neck or just a little bit on your face and just watch that area over the course of 24 to 48 hours if you feel burning start to see redness start to see irritation it's a very good idea and something really everyone should be doing but I think a lot of people don't know about it but regardless if a product is stinging or burning or making you red or irritated please stop using it there's no need to that's a good sign that your skin is you know not liking whatever ingredients or formula it has and you're going to be much better off finding an alternative product if you are looking for a good alternative niacinamide serum to try out you can try out the inky list niacinamide it's a great substitute to the ordinary one specifically for dry skin because i find that the ordinary one is better for more like combination oily skin so i'd highly recommend that one instead
subscribe. Oh, also all the products that she talks about and the products that I'm mentioning in today's video are linked in the description box below. If you do want to support me and my channel, I make a small commission, but no need to shop if you don't want to. Whew, okay, sorry y'all. I had to jump off for a meeting and it's now been two and a half hours later. I want sleep. But we have to continue this video because I'm so excited to see what the rest of her routine is. She's doing so good so far. So now I go in, after I go in with my toner, I apply my retinol with 0.5% from the ordinary. Ooh. And I also apply okay. my, hyalur my hyaluronic acid, which okay. has... Yeah. Um, which has 2% hyaluronic acid plus B5. Oh, hmm. also guys, please don't add the droppers directly to your face because yes, um, according yes. to Hiram, and I've also done research to back <laughs> it up, um, oh, good, the good. bacteria acids are not strong enough to kill those bacteria. So it's like you're dipping bacteria back into the solution. And therefore, yes. the product is not really that useful anymore. So happy to say that she's not only listening to me, that she's getting more information from more resources. That's amazing. So I'm going to be honest. I get nervous, really nervous for this part of the routine because she's layering really strong actives. Now, I love actives. I love exfoliants. I love glycolic acid. I love hydrating agents. So many different things. But I truly believe in an active minimalist approach, spacing them out and not using them at the same time or too many at once. She said after she goes in with the toner, she uses a retinol serum and a pretty strong retinol serum at that. The ordinary one is actually pretty concentrated. It works really well. Combining exfoliation and retinol in the same step is not the worst thing in the world. Like it can be done technically, but I'm very, very hesitant. And typically I never recommend that. The reason being, I don't think your skin should be exposed to a lot of actives at once. I think it's very good to be intentional about when you use a retinol, when you use an exfoliating serum, that way you don't accidentally over treat your skin and over exfoliate it or sensitize it or irritate it because combining a strong exfoliating product with a retinol is kind of, it's really teetering on the edge of asking for irritation. I'll usually do one day exfoliation, one day retinol, a break day, one day exfoliation, one day retinol, a break day. That way I'm intentionally spacing out my treatments and I'm also making sure that I'm getting a little bit of a break day so that the skin can really just focus on repairing the moisture barrier, basic functionality. Remember, our skin is really smart. It's an incredibly smart organ and skincare is meant to assist in taking care of our skin, not completely replace everything and layering a lot of actives and doing a lot of once can just push the skin a little bit over the edge. Also, I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend combining hyaluronic acid with retinol. The reason being retinol is really drying. So you want to make sure you're using a really thick, good moisturizer. Hyaluronic acid is a good ingredient, but it's also a very greedy ingredient and it loves sucking up all that moisture. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> but depending if you live in a dry climate or you do have dry skin, because if you're not in a humid enough environment, it can pull the hydration from within your skin, making you even more dry and combining it with retinol and already drying agent on dry skin. Again, it's asking for some problems and this is not splitting her at all because the girl does her research. I love it. And those are good products so long as you space them out. And I just hope that she doesn't go in with a retinol every day and an exfoliant every day because, oh my Lord, <sighs> that would just, that'd be a lot. That'd be a lot. After I um, tone, I actually use this eye cream from First oh. Aid Beauty. <gasps> that one's and really this good. Says I that love that one. Um, it says apply after cleansing in the eye orbital area. So I usually mm -hmm. apply like under my eye and around please don't forget like when you're applying your eye creams that you're putting it around all the way and you should really pat it in as well as the glycolic toning solution um any toner do not pour it on a pad just yeah. pat it in your face yeah, because that's good. even if you're like patting it in with your hands you're still getting that um what do you call it you're still getting the product on your hands mm -hmm. and it's not leaving it all on a pad to where you're not getting anything exactly. on your Exactly. That's why I've never really understood like always having to use a pad because I'm like, you could just put it in your hand, apply it to your skin. Worst case scenario, your hands get the skincare benefits. I don't know what the big deal is. I thought she was going to say that she passed the glycolic toning solution around her eyes and I was like, <clears throat> because you definitely should not be putting exfoliants on your under eye area. I love that eye cream. I have to say First Aid Beauty, they kill it with their eye creams. And you guys know how I feel about eye creams. I'm totally the person that's like, you don't need an eye cream. But if you want an eye cream, oh my God, the First Aid Beauty ones are so good. Their niacinamide one is my ride or die. That one's super good. Also their retinol eye cream, they just really kill it with their products. Lastly, I go in with a moisturizer and I use the hey. Holy Hydration yep. Face Cream. And the fragrance, it's fragrance free one. Free. Yes. Like I said, fragrance free is your best friend. <laughs> and this has hyaluronic acid with peptide complex. Now, mm -hmm. peptide complex. Now, peptide complex <laughs> helps to calm and computer. smooth your skin. And it um, reduces, oh, it helps with like anti-inflammatory, anti-inflammation in your mm -hmm. skin. So that's really good. Yeah. And I really love this moisturizer. It's good. very, very, uh, it makes my skin feel very, very moisturized. 
and hydrated and soft so this is definitely a staple but i only use this at night so in the mornings mm. i would go on with this CeraVe oh, okay. facial moisturizing okay. lotion and it also has spf 30 now spf just because you are black does not mean that you don't need spf in your skincare because sis you do because in the future <laughs> your black will crack and you will be looking crusty and dusty have autumn wrinkles and we don't want that yes okay? i agree spf also just like with zinc, it helps with the fine lines and the wrinkles and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, in and the we long really, run, yeah. Really don't want to have wrinkly skin at all. Exactly. Period. Not okay. Me. Oh. And so I, <laughs> I love that we both did that at the same time. Person watching this video to get sunscreen. No joke. I love her. I want to be best friends with her. The way that she preaches sunscreen speaks to my soul in a way God even couldn't do. I love seeing her pushing so hard for people to wear sunscreen because it's so true. I know it's so annoying to hear, but by far the majority of comments in my comment section, people don't use sunscreen. They'll use so many other stuff so they don't use a sunscreen. And I also love that she's saying black people specifically should wear sunscreen because I completely agree. Unfortunately, like I was saying before, due to the bias within the cosmetics industry and within the scientific community, not bias, racism, call it what it is. And because of that, black people have been the most ostracized and ignored people within the industry until the industry found out that they could make money off of their culture, but that's another conversation for another time. Whew, getting intense. And unfortunately, a lot of people do believe this message that black people don't need to wear sunscreen because they have like natural sun protection. And while yes, black people may not burn as easily, you can still get UVA damage and UVA causing aging. And the more you expose yourself to sun without sunscreen, the more you are accelerating that aging process. And I can only say wear sunscreen so many times, and I'm sure there's a lot of people with dark skin tones watching my videos saying, what is this pale ass white boy doing trying to tell me to wear sunscreen? And I don't blame you because look at this this shade that's embarrassing but you absolutely should be wearing sunscreen and i'm so glad to see her toting that message and hopefully sharing it continually to her audience thank you for what you're doing this also does not leave that white cast that all the other that a lot of other sunscreens do and this is also very very moisturizing for us dry girls out here now i'm not mm -hmm. sure if you can use this for um oily skin but i am recommending for dry skin Probably and not. this is only seven dollars thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you I really love liked it. if you want to see more of this content please let me know please don't forget to like comment, and subscribe We're so on nice to meet you virtually. And I'll see you <laughs> kitties later. wow i loved that that was so cool you know why i loved it it's clear that she's done her own research and learned from other resources as well, learned from other people, because some of the stuff she was saying, I personally don't really say in my videos or I don't recall saying in my videos. And as much as I do want to be an educational resource, of course, I also want people to be able to get a varied opinion, listen from other people, listen to experts, get a varied approach. And it's very clear that she's done that. I loved the products that she went in with. Honestly, no complaints about the products themselves, only about layering the actives. That's the only thing I'm concerned about. Her philosophy is so similar to mine. And I love that, obviously because kindred spirits. And finally, I fucking love that she's a Virgo because look at her, she's awesome. I think it's so cool that she's educating her audience and took notes on her computer. Like how freaking cool is that? It is the coolest thing whenever you guys tag me in your Instagram stories of you like taking notes, writing, typing out things that I'm saying in my videos because I'm just like, yes, you want to learn. I love seeing people who want to learn. But what do you guys think of this routine? Let me know in the comment section down below. Please go subscribe to her channel. She totally deserves the support. I really think that she deserves a lot more subscribers and I definitely think that we can do that for her. Thank you again to Audible for sponsoring this video. And if you are interested in getting a 30 day free trial, go to the link in my description box below or text code Hiram to 500 500. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.